Hey guys, did you miss me? Took a nice little break. It was it was nice um, from filming and whatnot. So I did a bunch of stuff. I rented that big breaker hammer again uh, for the house site for the leftover rocks that I thought were gone, but they weren't. Um, and I generated a big pile of rock um, and a big pile of gravel from all that work. And I'll show you as this video continues. But most importantly, I'm standing in the root cellar's hole. It's about five foot six right here. It's probably six foot over here, and it goes down 24 inches that way. But anyway, we're going to um, we're going to pour some footers down here. But first, we're going to take some gravel over there and pour it in here, and then tamp it all down, get it nice, compacted down. That's going to be the floor for the root cellar. When you come down here, you'll be walking on gravel. I think that's pretty cool. There are a few leftover rocks that we couldn't remove and I think we're just gonna leave them there. So when you walk down here, you'll see some natural rocks that are um, gonna be sticking out through the wall. There's gonna be some just kind of in the floor. So anyway, I got a lot of work to do. We want this thing done sooner than later. So we're focusing on the office. The so Meg has a proper workspace and then we could run our water and all that stuff up here, get a root cellar going um, and then install of our, our so solar stuff. So, let me bring you down here and um, we'll get to work. All right, so guys, I'm on the uh, side of the root cellar that's gonna be the entrance. There's gonna be a couple steps here. I'm gonna use just some natural rocks and make a little staircase up here to the ground level where you could walk outside. Above me is gonna be the office and it's gonna be a stick built structure. Um, the ceiling joists in here, the floor joists of the structure are gonna be made out of cedar. Uh, I almost have all of those, but I have all of the framing milled and all the sheathing done. So as soon as we get this foundation done, we could start framing, cover it all up, keep it dry, and move forward. So Meg will be happy. She'll have a permanent place to work and a, and a beautiful setting. And uh, we have all the solar gear to hook up in here too. So we're going to get to work. The plan today, I have a pile of gravel over there. Let me go show you real quick and I'll tell you where it came from. There is some clay mixed in here, but this is a pile of fines, and this is a pile of coarse. I'm gonna take some of this coarse material, not the big pieces, but the smaller, medium-sized pieces I'm gonna dump on the lower side of the root cellar, and then we're gonna take this stuff and cover the entire floor of the root cellar, and it will be the floor when you walk down there and get onto the floor level down there. This will be the floor. We're not gonna do anything fancy. We're not gonna tile it or put any kind of, I don't know, any any fancy material down it's just going to be this stuff which came from over there let me go show you so i rented if you remember i had a breaker hammer on the the uh on the track loader i rented that big hammer i had to rent it again and i spent a whole week pounding rock in various locations on our property but this took the better part of two days to this rock was up to about here and I pounded it down, pounded, pounded, pounded. It's still down there. Um, and I had to get it down to a certain level so that the house site underneath the crawl space is all level here. Um, and this will make a good base. I'm gonna pour the uh, footer right on top of this thing and it should be all good. There was no way to just stick the driver into this thing and break it and bust it up. Like this is an enormous rock. I don't know how far, or this is probably just the tip of the iceberg, if you know what I mean, but this thing just goes forever. And um, I was able to basically take that breaker hammer and chip pieces of it about this size off. So while doing that, it probably took about maybe 10 buckets of the skid loader full to make that pile over there. So I have all this beautiful limestone that's just sitting over there and I thought it'd make a good floor for the root cellar. So let's go get in the hole and we will uh, begin the process from the bottom up. All right, let's get to work. On my way back over, um, there's a little puddle over here, just on the outside. Look who it is. It's Picasso, he followed me up here. He's been up here for three days in that puddle. He's digging it. He's going to be upset when it dries up, though. All right, buddy, let's go. Beep, beep. Alright, 
smoother. That's all right. Let's disconnect. Good to go. These are super loose. Like they almost, like when you go up with them, they slip down a little bit and it's super annoying because the teeth or the dogs bite. I don't know if that means I need new springs or what. It's still functional, it's just annoying. All right, let's get this bucket off. See, it's like stuck. When it doesn't come off, you gotta make sure it's all the way. There we go. spread this around now like this I really don't have a machine to get in here at this point um, there's just a, a low side here and I'm trying to just build it up so that it's basically like somewhat level across the entire pad here and then the smaller stuff will be put across everything.
There we go. So that's a close up of what this stuff is. It's just a mixture of that clay and limestone. It'll make a good base. I don't know if it's gonna be permanent. We'll see if it gets too dusty. We'll see what it turns into. Once it all dries, it's kind of like, it's like a mosaic really. We'll tamp it all down and, and see what it, the final part looks like. Could look cool. If not, we'll just throw some finishing fine pebble stuff on top of it, so. So if a lot of you are thinking, what's this guy doing? Uh, you know, doesn't this have to be inspected and all this stuff? No, it doesn't. I actually called the building official and the only question I had, what will be inspected on this building is the electric. So we're gonna have solar panels all the way over there. They're gonna come in and feed this building. And then inside of here is gonna be the inverter charger and the batteries. That's gonna provide power to the house. So it's also gonna provide power for inside here. In, not the root cellar, but you know, upstairs the, uh, the office. So in the county that we live in, you are allowed to construct a structure that is less than or equal to 256 square feet. This building is like, I think it's 11 foot seven by 17 or something like that. So we fall beneath the threshold of having to draw up our permit for this building. Um, I called the building official and said, well, do I need, since this is gonna be powering the house and I'm gonna have electricity inside of this structure, what do I do? He said, just draw up the permit for the electrical install and that's it. And I told him it's a shed and his concern was, well, the shed needs to be tied down. I said, no, it, it's, it's, a, it's a shed with a root cellar. And as soon as I said that, he's like, oh, okay, okay, you, you'll be fine. He was thinking I was gonna go buy something at a box store and just plop it down here and contain all this uh, high voltage power solar stuff. So that's not the case. But um, in case anyone was wondering, um, you know, building officials, they're not out to get you. They're just there to enforce the, the rules um, to make sure everything's safe. Um, in my opinion, there's a little bit too much red tape everywhere, but um, most of the time, in my experience, you call them, you ask them questions, they answer their questions, and they try to help you. They're not out to get you and like show up at your property and cause trouble. That's just my opinion. Um, now I do live in rural Virginia, so it's gonna be different in municipalities and you know areas that are not rural. Um, but anyway, if you're just getting into stuff like this, don't ever um, hesitate to call those people um, because it's, it's just easier asking ahead of time instead of doing something and it needs to be undone. Good enough, that'll get it in the ground. So, I've been going with my trusty water level around the bends here. Let's take a look, I'm gonna, I used this the other day, but I like to re-zero it every, uh, every day I'm out here. All right, there's my bucket. I'm gonna move it actually. It's kind of, let's pick it up here. Oh God. Oh, one-handed. All right, that'll give me a little bit more water pressure, push the water along. And as you can see, where's my water? Where's it? Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's my water. Can you see that? There's my line. All right, so I started over here, and that's kind of my zero. So I'm constantly checking. Constantly checking. Clean off the bottom. Put it on here. You know what I need on this thing? Number one, a ruler. And number two, I need a level. Because as great as this thing is, if you're off a little bit, um, here, look. So I'm right there, if you could see that. Can't touch this thing. 
All right, there we go. I'm right there if you could see that, okay? Now I could just move this little zip tie up, that's fine. But I'm probably gonna put a little pencil mark right about here. Now, if I tilt this thing backwards and I'm not aware of it, look, it's going up. See how much that went up? It went up at least an eighth of an inch. So if you're relatively level, that's good. You gotta check your X and Y. So something to keep in mind with a water level. You gotta keep it level vertically. Plum, if you will. Come down here, let's check. We were above the top zip tie on this mark here. Let's let that come down. Outstanding. Good. We are plum. Let's go to this corner. Rest it on the top there. And let's go to our thumb here. I know I don't, I'm not giving you the best view. Make sure we're plumb. It's coming back up. And bingo, we are there. Okay, so that corner's good. This corner should be good. Say what you will about water levels, but they are extremely accurate, guys. Come back up now. Come on. There we go. Awesome. The other nice thing about water levels is there's no obstructions. Like, even if your bucket is sitting there, and I gotta make something level, like on the other side of that huge tree over there, and you're using like a traditional laser, that laser is not gonna be able to shoot through the tree to get a signal. But this, as long as you could reach with your tube, look, this tube is like going down there all the way around in a squiggly spaghetti ball, and then back up through here, so. All right, my corner's good there. Let's check this a few feet in. I haven't really tested this board too much, except for with my little, my little four foot level. Come back up, come on. So if it's below your finger on the water level, that means you're high. And that's unfortunate because I'm a little high here. So we're gonna have to adjust things. We're gonna have to pound this form down a bit. All right, it just rained and I had to scramble, guys. Um, I had to scramble to get this tarp in place. Now, before, I was just laying this tarp on the ground and then putting the corners with some stones and then letting the water collect and then I have a generator up here and a water pump and then I would just stick the pump in there and pump the pump the tarp out until I can maneuver it and then get it out and that's turning into a, a chore and it's difficult alone this is a big tarp this is I think like 19 by 25 something like that and it's relatively new and it's getting all beat up so I want to have a semi-permanent um, tarp situation here. So those two ends are gonna stay like that. I have that, I had no trees on that side except for like the one like 40 feet away, there's a buckeye over there. So I tied it to the corner and to the buckeye and then I did a friction knot and then I did the same there and then I was like, I should show this, this is cool. I've been obsessed lately, not obsessed, but I've just been I've been trying to work with knots and learn some more than just your common trucker's hitch and stuff like that. So this one here is called a camper's knot, I think. And it's for when one of your eyelets is just screwed up. This one's gone. It's stretched. I mean, I put it on here. I don't know what I was hoping for, but I didn't think this thin material was going to hold the tension on the rope. But So now, here's what i got to do. i got to basically make a straight shot here. And then you take your rope. I have just some nylon rope here. Put a loop right through it. Okay, leave some space. And then you wanna fold over that end. I don't know if that's too close or what. All right, so, should look like that. Now, what you wanna do is take this end here and go through three times, whoop, three times. One, two, three. 
Now, if you had more length, you could make a loop here and then cinch it tight, but I'm good in this situation. Let's leave it like that and just give the working end a pull. And that gives you a very nice, strong grab on the corner of a tarp. So let's go find a tree over there. I think we're gonna grab something. We're gonna, this is gonna be the low side. So I have a spool of uh, rope here. We're gonna take it and uh, go over there. All right, so do my best here, guys. So uh, what do you call this, the working end? This is the end, okay? So wrap it around the tree. You wanna pinch it, go over it. Just go over it once and then come through once, come through twice, and then going the same, keep it neat too. Going the same direction, go on the outside, this side now. Um, and then when you come around, you're gonna go through that hole. Now you gotta keep it neat and manage the uh, cordage. And it's going to, once you cinch everything down and get everything tight, it gives you a nice um, friction knot that you can oh, either go that way or you could pull it for some slack, adjust the height of it up here, pull it height tight again, and um, helps with two people. Someone can pull the tarp that way and then you can kind of slide this friction knot down and it'll hold it in place. All right, I took it to the next level, guys. Check this out. I got it suspended in the air with enough tension at each corner. Those are really held up. So I got that side to a maple and that one way up there. I moved it from, it was over there. I moved it to that branch of that uh, hickory tree. And, and then here, I just have it raised up a little bit. All right. And then over here, I got it dripping down into the trench. And it'll just wander its way downhill. So I don't even have to, I don't have to mess with this. If I want to take it apart, I could just uh, loosen it from that tree and the tree over here. And then just, uh, you know, two people just roll it that way, let it hang. And uh, when I'm ready to cover it up again, I can. But it's also, I could leave it like this and work like this. See? And it's not ideal. It's kind of depressing, but it'll be dry. All right. Let's remove this guy. Probably don't even need that one. All right, so these two off, and we'll bring the tarp that way. Here, turn you around. Nice thing about these... Um, friction knots is that you could simply just loosen them and then it gives you slack to untie it. Alright, this will not be too difficult to get back in order at the end of a work day. All right, let's put that there. I got one end tied to this tree over here. I got a new microphone. I know it probably sounds unnatural because I'm not right next to you, but I'm trying guys, I'm trying to make this channel a little better. All right, I wanted something that drained on its own. Oh, that's perfect. Heck yeah. I wanted something that drained on its own, meaning I don't have to get that pump involved when the tarp fills with water, right? So I have everything running off that way down the trench. So then you come up here, it's dry, right? After it rains, it's everything dripped off and the sun comes out, tarp's dry, nice and light. And then you could just do this, put it off to the side, and uh, I'm ready to work. 
that didn't take much time at all. All right, let's get in there. So I want to put this crossbar across the uh, parallel bars here, boards, and uh, now if I just take a screw and drive it through right here where I want it, you know, down into that board all the way, it's going to split. There's no question about it. That's just a dinky piece of pine. All right, but get the screw started, kind of like establish the path. Now reverse it, and it comes out, but now you got to put pressure on it downward. Now drive it through. No splitting. So you're essentially drilling a hole, like you're forcing it, but you're drilling a hole. Let's do it on this side too. Okay. Where the heck did I put these? There it is. Man, dark green screws. And look how close I am to the edge there, right? All the way out, put some pressure on it. All right, now drive it. No cracking at all. It's useful for softwood anyway.
Hell yeah. Oh, I'm glad I did this. Maddie, look out. Move back. Move. 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 Good girl. Go. Hey. Move. Hey. Good girl. See, that's what I'm telling. Maddie, move. Move. Good. I saw her move, she goes like two inches. She's like, I know what you mean, but can't be mad at me for <laughs> good girl. She knows what I'm saying. All right, well, that was a doozy, guys. I um, The breaker hammer, it's good for demolition construction work. Like if you're breaking up a sidewalk or a patio, tile, you know, stuff like that. Not for rock breaking, like what I'm using it for, but it can chip away, like chisel a little bit if you have this strength to hold the thing the whole time. That thing, it's a 35 pound hammer and it gets heavy after 10 minutes and I just had like a 45 minute session. But anyway, um, so if you're wondering why I waited till now to do this, because this, this wasn't my original plan, but as I thought about it last night, came back this morning, I was like, yeah, I'm going to remove the parts of the rock that are in the way of the footers so then I could continue the footers uninterrupted and then pour the concrete, put some pins into the rock before I pour and then kind of tie them all together. I just think it'll be a lot easier doing that versus trying to chip away concrete blocks to get them to fit level on top of a rock. So, I don't know. I, I think it's a good plan making this change. So, But yeah, I should have done that while I had the breaker hammer on the uh, track loader, but oh well. No one's perfect. A uh, quick little announcement before I get back to work. I have a new microphone. So if this episode sounds a little weird, if it sounds bad, uh, like things are a little too amplified or a little just too, whoa, hey, turn it down. Sorry, I'm going to learn how to use it um, and mess with some settings. It's just trial and error, so bear with me, okay? Um, I'm trying to enhance the channel a little bit so it's not so strenuous on your ears to hear what I'm saying when I'm, you know, 30 feet away. So it's a wireless microphone. Um, you'll see it. I'll be wearing it. Um, so anyway, bear with me. It's a little change and uh, hopefully for the better. So... But don't judge me yet on it, okay? Give me a couple episodes to get used to it, and sorry if it's annoying. Hey okay, guys, see this little yellow zip tie I have here? That's my marker. There you go. So that water bounces around a little bit inside the tube. Hopefully you can see it. Here, let me lift it up again and get it below. See the line? So I'm going to place it on top of the board of the footer. And you check the same mark with all of them. 
and it goes above, below, and it kind of equalizes out. So the method I'm going with here, that zip tie is about an eighth of an inch. And if that line of water in there is hidden by the zip tie, I'm calling it perfectly level with a slight variance, give or take a sixteenth of an inch. So, so I've checked it all the way around, everything here. Okay, especially the, the board that's inside our direction here, okay? And then we level horizontally to the outside board with the cross ties, like so. Let me show you. Going horizontally, so we went off of the top of the board here, now going across, just making sure that the parallel board is level. I just use this little 12 inch level and we call it good. And that's looking good. Okay, I did all the way around. All of this is level so far, but look at this cutout, guys. <laughs> so that rock, I got it beneath the level so that the concrete can be poured on top. I'll be drilling some holes right here and just putting some rebar in there so the rock gets pinned to the concrete because it's not the concrete's not going to adhere to this dusty rock. Okay, so we'll do that a little bit. Um, the other thing is just filling in the gaps, and I'm going to come around with some clay like this and just uh, stuff it in there. Fifty bags. That's four thousand pounds. Uh, skid steer. It could pick up about a ton. So let's do this in two trips. I got a pallet here. We're gonna unload half of this by hand and then uh, come back for the second pallet when we drop this one off. So we're going up to the house site. This is all for the footers for the uh, for the office. some help today. Right girls? Yeah. Go ahead Claire, you're about to yawn. No. Not Autumn? I help. You ready to help guys? I'm happy to have company and Miss Workaholic. It's me. <clears throat> Come yeah, on down Meg. Come on. Let's see. Meg's here. See you guys? Here. You're here. Ready to dominate Meg? Yeah. Let's All right, it. so let's rock, girls. Quick little project for you. So, we got the two tons of um, what do you call it up there? The concrete. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, track load is going to stay here. I have Ricky with a scoop of gravel. Meg is going to work on filling in that section. I'm going to dump it right there for you, Meg, while I'm gone. And then I'll take Ricky and get the rebar. Girls, your job is this. All right, so this is weird, but when I pour the concrete, I'm gonna pour it in here and the top boards, do we have a board I could show them what I'm gonna do? Um. All right, girls, when I pour concrete, okay, it's gonna be wet. 
right? Then I'm going to take this and go like this because this is level with this. So I'm going to make a flat section and then we let it get hard after that. So mm -hmm. I need to pour it on top of this rock. So I'm going to go around like this and keep it all flat. But problem here, the concrete's wet and it can come out of this hole. So what's cool about this soil right here is, is that it's here. Clara, take some. Autumn, you take some. What does that feel like? It feels clay. like clay. Yeah, you got it. It is clay. Show us, Autumn. It feels like. Oh, I'm this one. You know what that's good for? I'm packing. We're stuff. gonna not from this side. Now remember, don't be beating this up too much. But we're gonna take it. We're gonna fill in all the little gaps and kind of like, Yay! kind of like we're doing like sculpty. Sculpting. Okay. Can you stuff in all the little holes, like yes. around here, up and around, down there, and then... Do we have to do like the ground? Well, the ground, we could just pu push soil yeah. up against it and it'll be fine, but... So just like the little cracks? Yeah, just the sections where I had to get creative. It's not this like... Good? See, there's one over there too, Clara. Where? See it on the bottom? Yes. Okay. Is this good, Dad? Yeah, just pack it in there. Don't go through this side, but just keep it on this side so that if some concrete gets back there, we're not going to like, you know, you pour it in here, then it like oozes out here. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just try your best. Ugh. Let's get some good clay. This stuff's really good right here. I know I'm in front of the camera. Sorry. It's looking at your legs. It's fine. The camera likes your legs. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. I know, I'm really good at Look at this. Oh. Oh, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Oh, it's thanks. a miracle. Oh, it's a miracle. That should be enough. For our every side. So we don't have to do like the ground, right? We don't no, have to do no, just the holes of the template. And then we're going to come around here, like the holes on the bottom. We're going to fill it in the soil that I'm going to dump down here next with Ricky. I think I just.
Yeah, they're usually not this violent. Carmen found this one and started barking at it. No, no. Maddie, are you serious? You stay. <sighs> hey, now, don't be biting me. Get back. This one's all coiled up. It's cold. It's only like 60 degrees right now, if that. So this guy is uh, kind of grouchy. So we're going to let him be. It's just a rat snake. <sighs> it's got white on the bottom. It's the black snake. And look at his tail rattling. All right, we're going to stop bullying him and let him be. We're going to move on. Today's poor day. Let's get going. Come on, guys. Let's go. All right. Got the Cushman. Up the hill we go. That way. Is he gonna use that thing? Yep, sure am. All right, did a few things yesterday just to prep for today. Glad I did because, my goodness, it took all day. Just all the little things you need to do. First of all, I went around and I put holes in these crossbars every two feet. Hole there, hole there. They go on and on, there's about 27 of them. Okay, those are to hold the vertical rebar. Now I'm gonna do um, 48 sec, 48 inch sections of rebar. All right, come up to about here. And that will allow me to get the rebar into the footer and have it protrude and then build two courses of block before I would need to tie in another extension to it. And that extension would take me the rest of the way. It's going to be about six feet, nine courses. It's not quite six feet, but you know, on top of the footer and the clearance in the ceiling here, it'll be six feet. If they don't want to fall in onto one of these, huh? Feels like it's full of water. All right, let's see if that's enough gravity. That's great. I mean, we could just, you know, let it go and do the next step while you wait. But hey, that siphon works fine.
really dreading this part, but it's it's not bad. Just having a loader right next to the pile here. Well, they don't even have to bend over. How about them apples, huh? Got the Jeep up here, no problem. Definitely need some road base soon. All right, we are at the top here, guys. It's been a few days. Let's go check it out. All right. Look at that. Looks good. I think we're going to finish up here, guys, for this episode. It's getting kind of long. But uh, I'm just dying to get one of these forms off and to see how it all looks. So I'm trying to figure out which one to do. That's what I thought. Not perfect under the boards here. But... This is how you learn. Okay. I got two different screw heads, so it makes it kind of annoying.
little trim puller works pretty good doing this. Pry it away and then loosens it up. So I never, I never spray any lubricant in these. I just never, I've poured concrete a few times now. A lot of people just, they take WD-40, they knock it into the form. I'm just, I never do. It never really sticks for me. Watch it stick this time though. Nah, see, it's fine. Okay little held up on. <clears throat> okay, we're just gonna rip it off that one. Hey, not bad. It's nice and flat. So the crossbars, they didn't come out perfect. I mean, if I were to do it again, I would do these crossbars again. They were helpful, but I would put on the end some spacers to stand them off. And that way you can fit your trowel underneath there and screed it nicely. And then just take the whole thing off when it dries. Because you get ones like this. Um, there's one in the corner here, see? It's got kind of like a seam. And I mean, just to keep it real for you guys, let's bring it over here. This is where I first started. And it's kind of, can't really see, hold on. Let me show my mess. See, it's kind of a little messy. This one's a little messy, but this is where I first started. I didn't really get the slump right, so it was more more of a dry mix. But as we went on, it started getting better and better. So, Guys, thanks. That was a lot of work. That was a long episode. Hope you enjoyed it. It was me just kind of figuring out how to pour concrete into footer form boards uh, with some obstructions and just the difficulties of doing all this in a remote location in the middle of the woods. So... I'm glad it worked out this way. I'm glad that we had to do this project and we thought to do the root cellar and build the office before the house because I could see a gradual improvement as I look around these footers from that side just to over here. Now I could take the skill I've learned here, apply it to the footers for the house. It's basically the same size and we'll end up with a much better house in the long run. So yeah, it worked out really well. Uh, where do we go from here? We are going to be pouring the footers of the house. Infrastructure lines are coming. I just got all the solar stuff, the panels, the inverter charger, the batteries, all that stuff is coming. So we got a lot to do before winter comes and I want to stay busy through winter. I will be milling through the winter and putting it in the solar kiln. So that's the time I'm going to drop trees when all the leaves are off the trees. But I'm going to stay busy and try to, um, hopefully the cold doesn't come early. So fingers crossed on that. But anyway, Thanks for joining us. Hope this made your weekend a bit better hanging out with us. And uh, again, thanks for your patience with me just taking a little break for a few weeks there. So I'll see you on the next one, guys. Have a good one. You guys want some water? <laughs> Carmen, quit mooning everybody. All right, here we go. You want some water? Your butt is right in the camera, Carmen. No shame? No shame. Hey, why don't you come this way? There you go. Some water. That was a long run, wasn't it, Maddie? Good girl. Okay. Like this one doesn't even fold. I must have run this one over at some point. which means I'll probably run it over again. It still works though. It's just the legs are a little crooked. Oh yeah, it still works. What the hell? All right, that goes that way. That's why it's not closing, John. There. See, just like new. Oh. 
You know guys, Meg picked up this shovel in Lowe's not too long ago. It's a hunk of junk. All right, that should help with the risk of death. All right, much better. What are you, tired? Are you gonna move or not? I'm trying to get a cool scene here. Ooh, here comes a fly. Come on, I want to observe you. Move. Here's a leaf. I'm really trying to get this guy to move. Here, bro. Here, go ahead. Yeah. Come on, go ahead, move. You're getting mad, aren't you? Come on, little butt tap, there you go. You know that scene with the caterpillar or whatever the hell it is? So I hopped on the backhoe and I started working and I realized that like I'm putting the dirt right on top of the thing. I don't know. He could have gotten by and, and not be in that area, but I mean, how fast can he go, right? I just felt kind of bad. You can see what I'm doing, right? I can't see. Mm -hmm. Act like the camera's not there. Okay. Right, Hi, camera. camera. <laughs> hey, Mom, where did Dad go? He's going to get the rebar. What's a rebar? A uh, rebar long, is a rebar. long metal poles. It's a metal pole. That were on the trailer? That was on the trailer. Oh. Did he take Willie? No. Yeah, Autumn, you should know that by now. <laughs>